wild animal. And yet we ourselves do things we don't think about. So it's not all about pointing a finger at somebody else, but that we forget how majestic and how unpredictable these wild animals are. I remember being at a campsite once with all of my little kids. We were staying in a tent. We were in the Tetons, I think. You know, the thing about it was that we get into this campsite and they're like, you can't use toothpaste, you can't have snacks, you can't do anything. Oh, yeah, and everything has to be like tied up in the trees. And you can't do any of this. And I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do with five little kids? They have to brush their teeth. They all want to eat. They How am I supposed to function? You know, so that was really frustrating for me. But we get in the tent and in the morning, you know, I had a little baby that was... Um, having some trouble. So um, she had a cough or something. So I stayed with her in the car. I held her in the car all night, hardly slept as a mother. But we get up in the morning and my daughter, she was probably, I don't know, six years old or something at the time. And my husband is out in this gully gathering up all this like brush to make a fire. So he's gathering this brush and these twigs and my daughter looks at him and she goes, oh, <gasps> Papa, there's there's a moose behind you. And oh, he didn't realize that, you know, that attracts moose. <gasps> I mean, digging through the, the oh, yeah, brush like the rat, like they, and doing all that yeah. attracts them. So he's out there trying to get all this firewood and this moose comes upon him. And she's just <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, she's a little kid. And she's like, there, there, there's a moose. I mean, it was a full horned moose. And I'm looking out like, oh, my gosh, of course, I get out my camera, take pictures. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just like, just what in case the they heck your husband. <laughs> is going on? So he kind of slowly gets out of the gully. And these this big, huge male moose and then this younger male moose comes up behind him. And they just kind of meander their way through this whole campsite, like sniffing at the tents. I'm thinking, what would I do if I woke up and there was a moose sniffing at the door of my tent? And we're watching these moose just kind of go through the campsite. Male moose, I don't think are as mean as mama mooses with with babies. babies. I mean, they can be, especially during rut season. Yeah, You know, like I've been treated before. Oh, yeah. I've been treated before by a male moose. But it was during... Okay, so talk about this. You were treed? Rut. Is that what you said? (laughs) Yes, treed. (laughs) Meaning I had to climb... So what happened? I climbed a tree. So my friend and I were hiking. We were coming down. Where off. were you? We were in Utah. We were hiking okay. the Alexander Basin, which is up in Mill <laughs> Creek. And we were coming down from, I believe it was Gobbler's Knob. And we were coming down. And as we start to come out of the trees and into the meadow, there's a moose. And it's a male. <laughs> and oh he gosh. looks up. And like totally oh. sees us and starts to head towards us. <gasps> Oh my and gosh! Not, not That's like freaky. not meandering. Wow! Like charging. Oh, luckily my gosh. we had dogs. So I had my Annie dog, and she had her dogs, and the dogs start barking and circling oh. the moose, and so the moose starts kind of getting distracted. But in the distraction, we decide to get in a tree. We didn't just get, but we first started. <laughs> we got behind a tree first. And oh then my word! And then, so we're behind the tree, and we're watching the dogs <laughs> circling the moose, and the moose is trying to get the dogs and. Thankfully, thankfully, the moose didn't get any of the dogs, luckily, because I know she lost one of her dogs on a trail 
to a moose. Wow, that got really? Her dog. Oh yeah, yeah. And that got her dog like bit it or what? No, 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 no. With its horns, like <gasps> b- because they're oh very my powerful, gosh. killed the dog. And wow. so, so luckily that didn't happen. But in the interim of that happening with the dogs, there was three dogs and they were circling kind of the moose and the moose was getting distracted. She and I decided to get up in the trees. <laughs> and so I just climbed. I would too. I'd be like, get me yep. in the dang yep. tree. A little quaky. I just kind of got up in there <laughs> because that's one thing. Moose can't climb. <laughs> they can't climb the trees. And Not so, like bears, thank God. No, and some bears. Um, so, That's but the eventually the, the moose actually turned around and took off the same way that it came in. It's so then we the were dogs. like worried about, do we continue to go down this road? Because oh the moose word. headed down the same way that we were going to go. But so we waited a little bit, a little shooken up. I, I, yeah. yeah. And it took off. I've had a lot of encounters with moose. Uh, I've come down. I remember a lot of times coming down Mill Creek and I'd be on the road and then a moose would be there and they'd look at me and I'd look and I'd stopped and they'd take off. Uh, I was in a car one time um, going up to my then boyfriend's house who lived way up in the middle of nowhere. And this moose, it was a small, it was a male, young male, didn't even have his horns yet. And we stopped and he charges the freaking car with his oh head. Oh my gosh. Butting, butting, it was actually a truck, butting the truck. Wow. And we're just sitting there like we stopped and I, he was pissed <sighs> off. I've been in the Tetons before, hiking trails, and we saw a mama moose with a baby. And so we could look through the little trees and see the mama moose with a baby. And people were stopped there, and they were watching this mama moose. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I've heard this is not a good situation. Yeah, you don't want to be around moms. So I looked. Of course, I had to look, too. And then we kind of traversed along. But it's like you just don't know what they're going to do thinking of protecting their young that's just kind of a scary you situation in, you get behind a tree uh, well oh have i ever told you this one about the moose and jeff and i and he was on his phone oh, no. so jeff and i oh, my my, my friend that i've been friends with and in fact i live here at jeff's house so i used to be his personal trainer and we were out on a hike one day and we were coming down and it's like a wooded a little bit of a wooded area and there's moose charging us wow so he starts a- running it's towards tra- you yes and he oh, is. Oh, that would freak me out. Jeff is on the phone, <laughs> on like a call. Oh my! God. And so we, I'm like, get behind the tree. So we get behind the tree, and we are literally circling the tree with the moose because the moose can't get to us, and he's trying is to it, get to us. Is it hitting the tree? No, with its horns no. Or? He's not hitting the tree, but he's trying to get around the tree. So as he goes to the right, we go to the right. He moves to the left, oh we go to the left. Gosh. Like we are doing this back that and forth. Is and Jeff will not get off the phone. What? Serious. And, so, <laughs> and he's on the phone. I'm literally like dancing around a tree oh, with the moose. He's talking to him. He's talking on the phone with this damn moose trying to get us. <laughs> Finally, the moose leaves. But... I, he, I, I don't know why he leaves, but he doesn't he doesn't continue. I guess he got tired of us, maybe because he was tired of Jeff ignoring him. Weird. <laughs> on the phone. That is but yeah, crazy. He would, Jeff would not get off the phone. It was freaking wow. crazy. Well, I know that, you know, even deer. I mean, I have... Deer? There I've is. come oh. out of my house when I was in South Dakota, and there has been a deer in my driveway with huge horns. A big old buck. And I'm just like, what in the heck? I have to get to my car and they're kind of They'll know, run away checking though. me out. But I know they can rush you. They can charge at you if Maybe they feel Maybe a buck would, but I doubt it. But mm, yeah, that was a but little bit But you don't know. Freaky. You're right. You it's don't a know. wild animal. Yeah, you, you don't, don't know. know. You know, like um, they have wild they have wild pigs in in, <laughs> in Hawaii. Too. And oh they will, they you and you are warned too. Yeah, and you are warned. Boars, like yeah. you, you need to be careful. I I remember going to Arizona. I used to go every <laughs> January with my friend who used to put on the AQH a uh, Arizona Nationals, which is a quarter horse, you know, ri- ri- riding a reigning show. She'd oh been doing it forever, ever, and I'd go and I'd be a scribe. <laughs> and so I was on her team, and so we'd go out there and we'd stay at her friend's house in uh, Cave Creek. The first year I went there, I remember her saying, I haven't had sleep in like (laughs) three months. What? I'm like, what? And she goes, the javelinas. 
What the heck is that? Right? That's why I said javelina. What's a javelina? Well, a javelina is kind of like a pig. It looks like a pig, what? but it looks like a pig. It does. It looks like a warthog. But it's actually in the family <laughs> of like rodents. It's like what? A, but it looks it, it has little tusks. It's like it looks like a freaking warthog. And they make noises and they come out they're nocturnal. So they come out at night and they will eat shrubs and they'll make noise so like Oliver Garden would be eaten. So she'd get up in the middle of the night beating pans and pots and pans. She had a couple of BB guns. We'd be out there trying to shoot these javelinas oh that would come up in the middle of the night. Like, but the thing is, is they will come after you. Wow. Like you go out there, you know, you're beating your pot and pans, you're fine. But if you're out there and they see you, they'll, they'll like attack you. Wow. Yeah. I'd never heard of it. Look it up. Javelina. That's They're crazy. These they're just gross looking little well, pig looking like oh things, but they're not, gosh. they're not a pig family, although that's what they look like. Wow. Well, I've been in the Pacific Northwest and raccoons the size I've of like little bears mean. just like getting into the garbage and whatever. And oh, then yeah. I've come up to my apartment and up to the door and there was a, a possum that was Oh my gosh. They can be mean. Disgusting. Yeah. Huge. Like the hugest rat you've ever seen with those <laughs> buck teeth. And it would be like, <laughs> like <laughs> at you. And that just freaked the heck out of me. Oh, and I'd be like, get out of here. Get that out of here. Oh my gosh. You know, and it was right at our door. <laughs> and so I don't know. I can't really even remember what happened, whether my husband. You know, chased it off or whatever Where was at this? the time. This was in Washington State. Oh my god! So possums are the the biggest nuisance. And I mean, the the possums that I saw were just huge and scary. Oh my gosh! Well, they're kind of a nuisance because they come around, they knock your trash over, they try yeah. to get into stuff. Well, yeah. and then it was right in front of our door, just hissing at us, like like. <sighs> Well, don't come in here. Don't come in here. I do kind of feel like sometimes like we're in their environment, like we're invading their environment. Well, they don't have an environment you know, anymore. I mean, yeah, when it comes to the city, yeah, they, that's they just don't even have an environment. Like, Go back they to the country. They just try to acclimate to the environment that we've created. Poor things. Like and, rats. You know, that's what it is. And opossums <laughs> look like huge rats. And I remember being... Oh I've God. seen some big rats. I remember being in Southeast Asia and seeing a rat... A, a literal rat that looks the like size a size of a cat. Yes, I and know. It in New York, freaked me out, and I was walking down these streets in Asia and slipping. I mean, they were so like greasy and stuff. <laughs> I'd slip on the roads, and I looked over, and there was this rat running down the road that was the <gasps> size of a freaking cat. Yeah, I'm just like, what the heck is that? You know, and how yeah, the hell they get scary. that big? Yeah, it was scary. Well, I remember the first time I we went to Hawaii, I was like. <laughs> I think I was 18. I was dating, of course, the bass player in the band <laughs> who had course. a sister that lived over there. <laughs> of course I was. <laughs> Ended up, yeah, I've, I've dated a lot of bass players. <laughs> Married the drummer. What can I say? <laughs> and so I remember us going over to Oahu to visit his sister. We're going to go out clubbing. And so we're gonna like, get all ready. And it's dark out. And we go out to get in her little bitty, bitty car. And we open the door and the light comes on. And all of a sudden you see bugs all over the seat just scatter. What? Co cockroaches. Oh, little bitty cockroaches. And I'm like, oh, ah! I'm like, I am not getting in there. And she goes, Ew. don't worry. Once the light comes on, they scatter. Once you get in oh. here, they're in the car starts. They're gone. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so so I'm like, I don't want to get in the car. That's one thing about living in a warm climate like that is that you just got to get used to that shit. Oh, my gosh. And it was crazy. So oh. I get in the car. I trust him. We go to this <laughs> dance club. And I remember going into the bathroom. You know how, like, in the stalls, sometimes, like, they have the drain. You know, like, they'll have a drain for in case something happens or whatever. <laughs> there was this cockroach was that was, like, what? the size of my freaking <gasps> hand. 
I was what? just like, I don't think I can live here. I Where was this at again? Oahu. Hawaii? Oahu. Oh, my god! Since then, I've gone to Hawaii many times. It's a place that I almost moved to. And, yes, they have cockroaches. And you just kind of got to get used to them because. Oh, my gosh. But coming from the high desert where yeah, I I've grew up in. anywhere where there's been cockroaches. Uh, like I that. didn't see a lot of cockroaches growing up where oh. I grew up. I grew up around scorpions. Yes. <laughs> Ask me how many times I've been stung by a scorpion. I've grown up around about three possums. Yeah, I mean, and raccoons. Yes, but me, snakes, and scor- scorpions. Oh my, my brother gosh. used to keep go for snakes in his room. Well, okay, my son loved animals, and I was just a little. I was a single mother, and I was like. Uh, 